<clears throat> Hi, this is Stu, and of course we're at the lovely, beautiful Purple Valley. And today I'm here with Darby, which is great because we're having a, another themed interview. And this time we're going to be talking about forward folding. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to cover a little bit about hamstring injuries, but also the technique of forward folding, hopefully maybe to prevent it happening, but maybe could give you some insights into working differently and, and that sort of thing. But first of all, I wanted to talk to Darby, and I want to sort of take you right back to the beginning of when you started and first of all ask you were you sort of quite a flexible person before you started the practice or were you a stiffy like many of the teachers seem to have been when they first started well I was stiff but I had the ability to be flexible right so it was it was there but when I, when I started I was you know I remember just being so black and blue in the back <laughs> of my legs and all, all the trauma that went through my hamstrings and right. legs was, came, came along. And had you, so where did you actually start doing uh, physical yoga practice? I started in Mysore. In Mysore itself? Mysore. The only, the only thing I did was I, somebody had given me light on yoga. Right. So I was in Goa at the time before I went to Mysore. And so I was just practicing on the beach in the morning from, from my anger's pitches. Right. And so that was the first bit I did. But uh, apart from that, I, I really didn't even know what yoga was. And so how did you find yourself in Mysore then? How did, how did well, we drag you away from Goa? Well, I was coming to Goa right. and I went through Mysore first. Right. And I decided that I didn't want to bring all my possessions to Goa because I heard you could get things would be stolen. Right. You know, so I left my passport. And, and, and in those days in Goa, it was wonderful because we used to, I was in Arambul and Clearwater Lake and yes. there was no shops. It was just camping, you know, everybody was running around naked and uh, yeah. we just slept on the beach. So you're going back, how, that's a long way back, oh, seven, isn't it? That was 78. 78, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, a, a, you know, when I came back in 2000, it was a shock. <laughs> it was like <laughs> shops. Dramatically. <laughs> like Arambul had one general store and a post office. I think that's all there was in Arambul those, yeah. those days. So. And so yeah. how, so you land, so you came to go first or you went to No, Mysore? I was in Mysore, left, in Mysore. left my bag, my yeah. passport there. Came to Goa, and basically did the last of my flings. You know, I wasn't I wasn't going to do yoga until I was ready. You know, I'd made the decision a few years earlier to do yoga. Right. But I still needed to come to Goa to do the Goa thing, the party scenes, the full moon parties, etc. Right. And then that was over. Then I went back to Mysore to get my stuff. And when I got there, I said, "Okay, now I'm ready to." To start yoga, I'm ready to find a teacher. Where's Where's a teacher? Right. And I met this guy called we called him Old Cliff, Cliff Barber, and he said, "Well, I'm practicing. Come and meet my teacher." So, his teacher was Patabi Joyce. So you had? Did you have any idea of Ashtanga at the time, or the no different idea. styles I of had physical yoga? No idea. Yoga? No idea. I just didn't. I didn't even know what yoga was really. You know, I'd spoken to people about yoga, and I said, "Oh, yoga, yes. Oh, yeah. Sounds good." <laughs> yeah. And did that, is that what you thought you'd be doing when you got actually into the... the I, I don't think I had any idea, because I just knew yoga was from India, and right. Indian yoga is a little different because they're more bhakti, and yes. you could feel the yoga and the, and the spirituality that was in the, in the country, and that's what really brought me back to India for yeah. my second trip, and I said, well, I'll do yoga, but I had no idea it was going to be so physical and what I was going <laughs> to go through. But, but, and, and same thing, I don't know why I stay. You know, so I stayed there over the next five years. Me and my wife stayed there for four years. Wow. So it was a... And did you have any breaks at all? Did you go, you just stayed in Mysore? Uh, we stayed in Mysore. Guruji would occasionally, I no, I would, I stayed three months. Right. And I couldn't take it anymore. My right. body was broken and beaten up. Uh, Joanne was different. She just... She just excelled along. at she it, was, yeah. I, I was like the simple. rabbit and she was the hair, uh, and right. she was the turtle. And she just plodded right. along and I'd go and break and... And so I took a month off and came back. And then, you know, basically in the first three months we learned primary series. That, that, was, that was the um, program. The way it through. was done then. It yeah. was quite quick progression. Yeah, everybody who came, stayed three months and they learned primary, no matter who you were. Right. And he would adjust you, hold you and whatever if you needed. Yeah. And then we came back and then intermediate I learned in two months. It was wow. very, very quick. And the first days, you know, when you first, the first visit to the Shala, how many people were in there with uh, you? There was an English gentleman with a French lady, there was Old Cliff and a German. Wow. That so was it, like four. Four of you. I and mean, then, nowadays people would find that really hard to yeah, imagine. Yeah. Just, well, yeah. uh, and then I became the fifth, then a French guy came with the sixth. 
the German guy left, so we're back again, and then Joanne arrived one week later. So it was, it was a very small group. And in fact, times, there was just Joanne and myself. We were the only two students wow. for, for months That's on end. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. For, and for some reason, we stayed there. I don't, you know, I don't particularly know why, but we just... Something grabbed just, you. Just something was there, and uh, what's amazing is the two of us arrived at the same time, we clicked, and, we, and we're still together. You know, all so. this time. Yeah, yeah, all this time. So. That's great. Yeah. And so we're, we're, uh, we're theming this about the forward folding. I mean, obviously, there's just only one little bit of what's going on, but what was your experience of forward folding when you first sort of started? Were you, did you struggle? Oh, I struggled, yeah. Right. You know, I, uh, but Karuji just pushed me down. Right. He was just pushing, and that's why, uh, you know, I was... I was black here, then it would move to here, black, and, and it was just stuff happening. And I remember uh, asking Joanne to give me a massage and she touched me and I just jumped. I couldn't, I couldn't do right. anything. And, and this was my first three months, it was after like the first week. Yeah. And it was just pain shifting in my body. So, um, but I think Garoji's technique was, which I've seen him do, and he, which he did it for me for sure, was he'd push me into position and my body would go there. Yeah. I had no idea what was happening, so we just push and the body would go. The next day is where it got difficult because yeah. my body knew what was going to happen, and then the resistance happened. Yeah. And then it was you know, two or three weeks of resistance before you finally gave up again. And then wherever he was taking you, you could, you could start to go. Yeah. But there was a lot of you know, trauma in between, uh, physical trauma. But I'm talking to the guys here, that's not the way you teach yourself now. Oh, it no, seems I'm very, very gentle. I'm very, well, I, I, I went through all that, but then I've changed, because I know a little bit more about uh, anatomy in a way. Yeah. Um, working more with anatomy trains, which is more uh, much linear. The continuity mm, between continuity one muscle from, and another. Well, yeah. one muscle, one part of the body with the mm. skin all the way from the, you know, the forward bend comes from the toes mm. to here, not, mm. and it doesn't get broken anyway. Mm. As soon as you break it, then you've lost that continuity. Mm. So I've just worked ways of understanding that, and it's very different to the way we learnt forward bends. Um, and when I'm looking at it now, and I see pictures of Patabi Joyce and his forward bends, and I look at the pictures, pictures of Krishmacharya and his forward bends, it's very much what I'm teaching. Right. You know, so, so for those that haven't seen those pictures, it's with more of a rounded spine. Much more spine. of a round, rounded spine. Yeah. Much, and what they're working with is bundle. Right. They're working from, you know, not up here, yeah. but way down just above the pubic bone, this bundle there, which really changes when you're holding that and you hold there, changes the way you're going to forward bend. Yeah. And if you don't hold this, then you can, you can just fold at the hips and do a, a pike, basically, which, which then breaks the body in two anyway. It breaks the body from feet to hips, and then from hips to head or wherever, shoulders, wherever you, and you go. So there's, there's, quite, there's been a trend in, the, in forward folding to say, don't round the spine, lead with the chest. Obviously, maybe to avoid that, people were just sitting up straight and just curving the spine. Well, uh, well, for beginners, if you're coming as a beginner and, you, and you're sitting back like this, yeah. the main pro the process is to get up straight and get the pelvis yeah. above 90 degrees to yeah. get the forward bend. And uh, from what I can understand from the health industry, a lot of the forward bends was come like this, keep coming, keep coming, keep yeah. coming. And they were really trying to emphasize the hamstring, yeah. which if you do this, it isolates the hamstring and then uh, you really feel it there, so they feel they've got to open up more. Yeah. Whereas if you hold here, the continuation comes from the feet past there and comes up, and so you don't put so much stress on the hamstring anyway, yeah. um, and, but you don't feel anything. And do, do, is there a fear that you might load the lumbar spine? I think that's why this original thing of coming forward well, with Well, actually, you're not mm. loading it, you're releasing it. Mm. In fact, this is going to load the lumbar spine more mm. than um, yeah, yeah, as a beginner, no, a beginner, you're coming like, if you're back here and you're coming, then it's going to lower the lumbar yeah. spine for sure. But as soon as you get past the 90 degrees, yeah. then the movement changes. You don't have to worry about the lumbar spine anymore. Mm. Mm. But I just think that this kind of concept came and everybody started doing it. Yeah. Um, a lot of like um, monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So, and that's basically what I was doing. You know, I, would, I was learning, even though Guruji was teaching me, he wasn't giving me very much instruction because he, could, he didn't speak 
English. Right. You know, in those days, very little English. Yeah. You know, good man, bad lady, twenty dollars, five dollar fine. Just. I so What did you get fines for? Well, if we, he's just joking. You know, he would say something if he did something wrong. Okay. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know. So you didn't actually get fined. No, he would just say <laughs> you know, it's kind of, and that stuck with him. Everybody yeah. knows that as part of his. Yeah. Part of his uh, humor. Yeah. You know? And so some people with their their hamstrings it seems like almost a, a, well let's say the back of the body we won't maybe focus just on the hamstrings but their forward folding journey can be um very very slow yeah it's like it's almost that their body is resisting going forwards and then for other people it happens very quickly and for you, what was your experience and then it came, maybe it came came quickly it came quickly you know within you know, after three months, I could do primary. I could do all the postures in primary. Right. There was no problem. I went through a lot of uh, trauma in, in the body of doing it because of yeah. the adjustments Guruji was making in yeah. those days. Um, but once I had it, it was there. I mean, yeah. You know, the back bending came. So, you know, I believe I was flexible. I just hadn't been into those positions. Positions and then, before. Yeah. So and so, when you count, I mean, in your years of teaching, how many has it been now? I mean, we're teaching maybe. Uh, or close to 20 years. Yeah, you know, so in that amount of time you've obviously seen, seen thousands of students. And yeah, oh so yes, yes. How do you, when you have somebody that has maybe even come to you, they've been practicing for five, ten years, and they still are basically sitting up, they, they can't come forwards for whatever reason. Oh, they can't come forward? Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. It's very interesting. And quite often when I've, I'm, I'm really just experimenting with this in the last couple yeah. of months. Yeah. Uh, just w uh, trying to find out where they're breathing. Right. You know, quite often they're, they're not breathing down here. They don't get the breath into the pelvis. Right. And they're breathing more up here. Yeah. And they just um, get stuck. There's no release of a, the tension in the pelvis. And they right. just create more tension. Mm. So I've been looking at trying to get people to bend forward and I'd come in and play with a psoas. And, and I'm actually with Carol, Carol and doing it now. And right. She's going through hell. Um, <laughs> But it's, it really is that she's not breathing down here. Right. And because the breath's not going there, all that creates tension in that area. Whereas so you can start to breathe there, and then you're going to release the tension, mm. and then it's going to soften, and then... Mm. And that's what I'm finding, is I come in and I just come down and get people to feel where they need to breathe, breathe, and then they just... Mm. It, let, it lets go, they just manage to go forward. Mm. So. And so... When we're thinking of breathing, we're thinking of taking the focus down there. Definitely, definitely. Mm. You know, the breath starts there. Mm. You know, we, even though we're only breathing in the lungs, yeah. we're as, especially in the Ashtanga. You know, in normal breathing, they want you to breathe the belly going out, and it's it's a big thing to let the belly go out. But in Ashtanga, we are doing this Drawing gentle, in. this holding, and mm. yeah, this holding, this toning. It's not tight. Mm. It doesn't it definitely shouldn't be tight, but a toning that just lets all the organs come and lift up. Mm. So the breath is here, and as we breathe, we let it come to the back of the body and come up. But it's got to start in this area. Yeah. And if we don't get it there, if we're starting up here, then it, yeah. it, the tension can come there in the pelvis. And, so. and do you, so the, the big thing for a lot of people seems to be the sit bone pain or yoga butt, unfortunately they've even named it now. So. Do you have an inkling as to why that is happening with practitioners? With sit bone pain, mm. which would be uh, they're just starting to tear the. So what makes them vulnerable? Yes. Yeah, so why? Are they, why what's happening? Just bending like this. Right. If you've short and you're only working from here, the, the connection now is here. Mm. So you're coming here, pulling here, pulling, and it's just, and and a lot of people want it because now they feel the hamstring getting torn, yeah. getting, getting a, a little trauma, is getting a stretch. Yeah. Mate. Oh, and if I don't get that feeling in. They've, well, there's no feeling. Yeah. I need to find that feeling, yeah. and it's not a feeling you want. But it happens with advanced practitioners and new beginners, and it's, it's uh, again, if you're looking at everybody doing this in your practice, yeah. then you're going to want to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, in my school, I'm getting everybody to do this. I never want people to, to reach around at all. It's just to hold with their just and to hold. Actually, I seem to remember very very light hold, so almost just just, just, just this fingertips. Exhale, just fingertips. Yeah. Exhale. Yeah. Inhale, let it relax. Exhale. It's enough if you have, again, correct connections, which means the shoulder's back yeah. and the shoulder girdle coming in. That connection from there will come and connect it. In fact, it'll be all the way to your feet. Yeah. So you just get that and that's your connection and that's all it is. And that's the holding. 
but you need a medal to allow your ventures to go to come forward. To come forward. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really the secret. And then it changes as you're holding here, then this comes over mm. into the back. So you have a much, much longer Long. range of motion yeah. because yeah. you've taken it from here now and not just from there to there. And so. what about for some people that, um, we were talking, I know before off camera about the, the balance as well in the body between the front body and the back body it can also be a little bit of an issue Oh, you were talking about back bends or? No, we were talking about, you were talking about the strength of the oh, quadriceps. The quadriceps, yes, the yes, yes, as well. yes. Um, So, again, that's a great problem for, for a lot of people. Is, and basically, it, it starts as children. So when you have the opportunity to stand up, you can either stand up from your heels, which means you engage quadricep, or if you come up from the front of the foot. If you come up from the front of the foot, you use much more of a leg, and I experiment this with uh, students. I have them squat, stand on the heel, stand up, squat, come up from the front of the toes. Yeah. And at the beginning, I have them just squat and come up, and then I say, which one is comparable to the one that you normally feel? Yes. And then I get different results, and, and it's generally when you're coming up from the toes, it's less, much less pressure, uh, and you don't use the quadricep. There's less tension in the knee joints and the hip joints. Yeah. Um, and but, and when you compare it to uh, people in the East, like uh, maybe it's changing now because Indians are sitting on chairs. Yes. But if you're getting up from the floor like this, yeah. it's a very different action that puts you more weight on the front of the foot. On the front of the foot. So you, you don't get dominant in this. Yeah. So that's the problem. When you're dominant in this, then you're pulling here. And even when you're bending the legs, if you have dominance there, it starts to tear the knee joints mm. or even in the groins. Mm. So. And again, this is, I discovered this when I had people with injuries. Right. And realized that how much they were creating tension. And when I release the tension, then the pains disappear. Yes, so. And so, for those people that are um, experiencing the beginnings, because sit bone pain can be ongoing for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it can yeah, be a two yes. year journey if you're not careful. Yes. So, and I always say to people, the moment you start sensing something, then change. Change for sure. Before it's too late. Yeah. So what would you suggest for people that are just getting that niggling feeling now that hasn't progressed, but they want to practice? What well, I, they do? I, I, I show them how to bend forward. Right. And no, we're going to do that in the next yeah, part, part I two. Just, I just yeah. show them, and I go, basically I'll sit with somebody and I'll sit in front of them and have them pushing my hand, so they're right. pushing. Right. And just push to come forward. Right. Exhale, push, and that again connects to here, yeah. opens up the back but and gives you that rounding effect. And then they feel that. As soon as they feel that, they go, wow, I feel space in my back. And I feel like I'm grounding and I actually feel my lower abdomen coming in. And straight away, they, you know, not everybody, but uh, hopefully and then if I'm doing that with somebody who's Holding like that, yes. take them into my class, in the class, and do that. Then I see their reaction, right? And see how they want to, you know, react to that. If they feel it, if they're willing to understand it, want to make a change, yeah. then I'll just show them more and more stuff. Yeah. So that's that's generally where I start. And, and do you have a because I mean, a lot of us have different postures that we really feel comfortable in, and, and really, uh, my favourite posture is double pigeon, which is not in the Ashtanga series, but it's um, fire log posture, whatever. I, for some reason, I just yeah. really like it, and to fold forward and like that. Do you have a, a forward folding posture that you actually really just feel so comfy in, probably, or just... Probably Paschimottanasana. Paschimottanasana. It's, it's a great posture. Yeah. You know, gen actually, actually, the one I like is Janu Shishasana. Yes, the A version. Yeah, just mm. A or B. A yeah. B is ac excellent, both of them. Yeah. But they but I again I'm doing them very, very differently. Is that I'm really coming in and I'm, I'm actually doing Bhattacharya and a B. Right. In it, so I'm really coming over and bringing the head down. Okay. So I really work that way. And yeah. That's, it's such a powerful posture. Yeah. It's, it's and uh, they talk about it as Mahamudra. So Mahamudra is all to do with the spine, all to right. open up the spine. So that's very, very powerful. And more of an uplifting. Yeah, it's uplifting, you're coming over and uh, head is down and uh, if you're going to do retention of breath, excellent, excellent. Yeah. yeah. So that would be one of my favourite, especially, and then sitting on the heel yes. is even better because now you're really working the perineum and there's yeah. 
as you create this action, it's a downward motion of the perineum on the heel, yeah. and of course the opposite action coming into the body. So. And seeing you sitting there, you, you've got your foot running down basically near enough in the same direction as your leg, or your bottom foot. Oh, this one yeah. I do is just turn about my Yeah, head. and, and when you sit. sit on it. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I square the hips more. Square the hips on I don't, it. I don't, I'm not really out like this. I'm yeah. trying to come in there as a forward bend. Yeah. I'm not trying to make it a, a twist. Not opening as much not as possible. Well. Yeah. 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 Again, I'm working on this, the energy that's in the spine. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking at this yeah. rounding to come for. Because that foot position does change quite a bit, doesn't it? And it, it, it does. If you, if you have a, you know, what I'll do to people is, um, if I have a foot like that, I ask them to try and lift off the foot and see what they feel. Yeah. And do this way and push up and yeah. see. And this gives you much more connection yeah. inside. So and that's what you yeah. want compared to this. This is more like you, as you push you, the body sinks down. This one, the whole body inside lifts up. Engages. So that's foot. why I prefer that. And do you see a different foot position in some of the deeper forward folding? So like... Um, Sometimes people talk about a pointed foot in maybe Upavishta Konasana or oh, some yeah, of the... Um, very much. Very much like This that. is what I want all the time. I uh, saw so that in between. So yeah, it's, it's just yeah. reaching and yeah. um, if you do this pointed, yeah. what happens to the calf muscle? It mm. jams in it, it mm. holds and tightens. This opens up mm. the muscle. So now energy is going to flow through there. Mm. Whereas this is a little blockage. This yeah. is opening up, so that's what I look at. So a little bit more yeah, protective do, foot, but not. Yeah, I do the same with the hands, point. just yeah. slightly active, nothing stretched out, but just reaching. reaching. And again, you can feel it if you do this, you feel what happens in this muscle. Yeah. And then you let it open a bit, this opens up. And yeah. It, and the drawing that. Uh, well, it's just energy for flows. Yeah. And with the standing forward folding, sometimes there can be a tendency to take the weight too forward or too back or, oh, or whatever you. It's a whole it's a whole thing on it's, itself. Well, it's again, <laughs> it's, it's when you're lifting and the same motion I'm using, it's, it's yeah. here. If you hold here and this stays in, this rib's actually going to move in slightly and come it, it, Well, it's not actually going to move that much, but it feels like you're going to be doing this. That it's not that extreme, bit. but it's just here. And as soon as you exhale, that motion happens. And, and there's the initiation. Connection. So there's that slight rounding again as you come down. Mm. And... Um, it makes a difference too. You know, if I'm coming forward and standing, I see a lot of people come and they want to get the head to the knee and they suddenly go like this. Yes, yes. Whereas I'll come in and I'll bring the ribs in more and my whole body will come in closer. Right. And I don't have to lose this connection. This yeah. connection of the head going forward should remain. I don't want to start more doing of things a like neutral this. Neutral not, even, not even neutral. It's, it's, yeah, I guess it's neutral, but in a way that it's leading. There's this yeah. connection. The head's going to take you. And it doesn't matter what direction the head goes, it's right. going to bring the body. Whereas if you start doing this, Drop, the head, head, head can yeah. move and it has no connection to the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very much watch for head. And, and for yeah. some people, again, when, they're, when forward folding is very much challenging, then they think, okay, I'm going to do a lot more of it and see whether that works because they've they struggled. But quite often then that takes them back and they just land up s stiffening up. So again, it would be the way they the way they're the, doing the, it. The, their muscles are engaging, and yeah. and maybe the way they're breathing. So there's a, uh, a few things. But yeah, again, some people just aren't that flexible. So. Yeah. But what I, like I said, what I've been looking at is is with the, f the people I have in my studio in Montreal, and they're the ones yeah. that I work with and see for months on end. So, so bigger chunks of time. Bigger you chunks are on open. the road quite a bit, oh, aren't you? a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I get to see those people, I can look at them and, and I try to adjust them and see how the adjustments work yeah. over a period of time. Yeah. And, um, Experiment. Experiment. They are your guinea pigs. Yes, yes. <laughs> which is like, it, you know, that's yeah, how you become a good teacher. You have it's guinea a learning pigs. process, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Learning all the time. So. Yeah. But, um, and with your own body, because you, you've been practicing now how many years? Oh, I started in 78. 78. Yep. And, and so if you had to change things as you've gone on, obviously you're experimenting your own body as well, but is there anything dramatic that you've suddenly thought, God, I'm not happy with the way I'm doing this. I'm going to change this and do that. Oh, well, I've changed it anyway. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's changed as I've gone along, but yeah. I can't. What I, what's been has been, and what's happening now is changing, and I just find the change is, is better, and the yoga is actually getting better, and I'm getting less and less flexible. So. Yeah. Because well, forward bends I can bend forward, but yeah. uh, 
but I, I, I don't, you know, I'm getting old, mature, mature you know, yes. Yes, more mature, so yeah. I don't have, have the, uh, the strength and the, to do what I used to do, you know, so the back bending's not as good, but the yoga itself is better because I'm looking at it in a different way. You're more sensitive yeah. and more focused. Much more internal, yeah. much more internal, yeah. and that makes a difference. That really makes a difference. And, and I'm doing much more pranayama and, right. and, and meditation. So that's more of a yoga that I'm into now. And, and I'm basically using the asana to make the pranayama and the meditation better. Better, yeah. yeah so. Brilliant. Well, I think now is a good point, I think, to take it into phase two and look at the practical. And that maybe will also make a little bit more sense. If you're not being quite getting the message, then Darby is going to show us. Um, we've got a, a good candidate, Neil, which is coming in a minute. Uh, he's got a little bit of a hamstring thing going on, so you've been experimenting with him as well. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll uh, cut here and we'll phase in the next bit. So here we are with part two, and Darby is going to put into practice some of that uh, stuff that we were talking about in part one and we've got Neil here that's helping us he's our duty manager and he's multi-talented we have him singing we have him doing all sorts of things so now we've got him as our demo person and so we're starting what posture are we starting with Darby? We'll just do a Padangustasan. Padangustasan. Mm. So it'll show, it'll show the forward bending and um, maybe I'll just get him to do it. Okay. Uh, the way he normally does it and then we'll see what changes we can make. So Padangustasan. Ooh. You clown. <laughs> I was going to do it to ask to pad English. Pad Hey, peanuts. This is what we get. Oh, he's, he's already improved since last week. So, what I'm looking for is when I'm helping someone, or understanding is first the feet. Right. So, I know that the feet are correct, and you bring the skin up, it's going to come up here, and then it's going to come up and open up. The back of the legs uh, and I know the direction if I'm getting this action it's going to just come up evenly on the leg if something like this is happening with the toes pressing down then it just becomes a front and then we could I could see that in your toes but perhaps you could bring them here so yeah so if we've got more of a spreading and spreading it's just sit here and you spread your toes spread is enough toes. Uh, what I'll teach people is this to bend the legs lift the heels yeah and keep the legs straight come down and that should naturally happen right um, but okay. that's it. Then I have you here. What I'm looking at, uh, one of the things I'm looking at is the shoulders. I don't want the shoulders here. I want the shoulder blades to come this Drawing up. up the back. They come up the back. And that will open up the chest for one thing. It will open up the back of the body so the lungs can expand much more. Which right. is one of the things we're working with. But as this comes up and he pulls, this part of the body is going to go down. So this is what you're taking forward, not this. This is actually, oh, relax, comes this way. Yep. In fact, he can just come here and actually push his knuckles into the floor. So and he's not pulling up on his toes so no, much as pushing push, his knuckles If he pushes his knuckles, knuckles the down, okay. then I'm sure if you ask him, if we push down here, he's going to feel the connection right More in the lower connection abdomen. There. And that's what we want. We want this there. This connection to be there so when he comes up, he's actually coming up holding here. It's almost like he's going to do harakiri. Right. Exhale when he comes up harakiri here and comes up, up, inhale, up, up. And then it's going to maintain a round, a slight round of the back as he comes up and won't involve these muscles. Okay. So like people will come up like this and they come up and all these muscles are pulling in and it's actually crunching the back. Whereas what you want is to come up and the abdomen stays in and he come up. Which means if we look at the movement of him going forward again, if he breathes in and the movement, if he holds here and exhale there and if we just get him to back up a minute. If he exhales here, the movement of this rib is going to come down slightly, and that's what brings him forward, and he can come down. And now you can see yeah. how his back's open. And now the movement of what's happening to all this extension from here coming up is going to come up here and go over his body. And again, the shoulders come back. Yeah. There. And then if he wants to go closer to his body, a lot of people will take the head in, as I was saying. You actually should just be able to come in with the ribs and bring the ribs up and that'll take And when you feel running. the rib cage resting on the thighs, that's far enough, yeah? Well, yes, the rib yeah. cage, you can touch it, you don't even have to touch it, just yeah. bring it in, but it's going to bring the chest much closer. Yeah. And avoid bringing the head in, because if he takes the head to his knees, if you can do, it'll really pull the neck in here. Yeah. And again, we're losing the ability to breathe into this part of the chest. In fact, the head yeah. should be going 
straight down. Yeah, and actually so, it's quite a nice lengthener for the neck, oh, isn't it, in this position, yeah. because the head is heavy. Head is heavy, but, you, but you're yeah. reaching it. You don't let it yeah. just hang. You actually yeah. reach the head. You can actually, if every time he pushes the knuckle down, yeah. again, he's going to connect through here, yeah. up through his leg. It's going to connect to here, and it's actually going to make him want to reach forward. Yeah. Then he can use the head to actually exhale, squeeze, and actually reach down to the floor. Reach the head down. And then again, when you come up, the inhales come up and keeps this rib in. Then exhale, you can get the shoulder blades in position. And then harakiri, so just holding the bundle, come up, rib yeah. stays in. And it, no tension in the back at all. Yeah. Feels and good. Where, mm. The weight in his good. feet there. Was there, it was staying neutrally Neutral, balanced between yes. the front and the back? Between the front and the back, yeah. always. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes we see the old hips being pressed back, weight coming into the heel. The, the, the movement of the hips and everything going back mm. is just the body keeping in balance mm. with itself. So you, you're here, you, if you go there, yeah, but if you pull in, the hips are naturally going to go back to a certain point. I and mean, even when you get here, now we're going to start to come forward. Right. So they're going to stay in balance all the time. Right. So, and Neil, you you had a hamstring injury at the beginning of the season, didn't you? Yeah. And so, have you noticed the difference working in this way over the last few weeks? I know it hasn't been as severe as it was at the beginning of the season. Completely, in fact, because yeah. the, the injury was at the attachment. Yeah. Up here on the sit bone, and uh, Dobby's uh, method of spreading the toes and engaging from there yeah. seems to get an equal engagement through the legs rather than just jamming the quadriceps and lifting the knees and yeah and this seems to be much more helpful cool in fact yeah. uh, if you want to just bring one foot forward and step one foot back in as if you're coming into Pervotosana and what I'll do to people here is I'll get them to bend my leg and you could step back a little bit further get a longer stance and I'll get them to lift this foot up and lift the foot and don't put any weight in my fingers bend your leg no don't come up just bend your leg and now from the heel push back and reach and now reach the foot down and then keep that and you can again see what's happening with toes and then come forward so you, again it's coming here lifting and coming down and I'm sure his hamstring just feels fine yeah okay yeah. but your main thing is to keep it yeah keep it and then come up and keep that same action of pushing and get the you know, big toe can touch can you let the toes down yeah, you can, if let you can the... reach this down it should it shouldn't be so tense but yeah don't be but, tense yeah. it's because he's on camera and coming up and this again <laughs> coming in so that will really and this is a very good for somebody who has torn a hamstring right even if you've got a hamstring pull if they they work this way there's no there's no strain right and then they have this very good learning tool because every time they do it correct, there's no problem. And if they let this kneecap go and it goes back into locking, right. they'll feel the hamstring straight away. Right. So, so can you talk you. us, just talk us through in slow motion, just for people that they can get that again? So we're starting so at the, the feet. The, the, there's two ways. One is I'll get them to, this is the other way. They, well, first on the heel, and they don't put any weight on my finger. They okay. bend the leg, and then from the heel, they reach back, they reach back. And once they keep that reaching back, reach the foot forward, and then, from there push and then come forward but the motion is again as long as he's holding this you can see how then it lifts creates Lifting space in here arm. so it's not just trying to hinge at the hip not hinging at the hip at all and you reach down but it's also creating the muscle where you're working front back muscle and, okay. and that's why it works you're engaging the muscles back here which are now protecting you by, by not allowing you to get into the hamstring and pull it right so there's a protection but if he lets this go then straight away his old method of quadriceptal engage, the hamstring here with no muscles will be there and then it'll yeah. go straight into the hamstring. So it's important you keep it and then press them and come back up. And then the other version, you said that's and one the way other of version doing it. Is, the other version uh, is some people like this one, they lift the foot and then push from the toe and push back. Right. And then lower the heel down. Right. And basically do the same thing, come forward, hold in here, make sure this is holding, holding in. You can see that he's got a little bit of a bulge there. Is that from, too much from, good food here? I think that's what that here. is. Yeah, but that's also that uh, it's not, you can see that he's not used to getting that action Drawing to pull, in and up. comes in and holds in. So, good. And the same principle, can it be used in, you were going to do Utita Hatsabalangastasana at the beginning, can it be used in that same oh, sort of thing sure. with the standing leg? Yeah, but uh, again... And, the, and what happens with the leg that's going in the air? 
um, again, the way that I'll teach it is uh, instead of lifting the leg up, or I'll have people lift the leg and then just have I put the toe down and then lift and it releases here. But again, the spreading of the toes right. is there. Or if I'm going to teach them, I'll get them to hold the foot, yeah. press the heel down as if they're stepping upstairs, come to here, then extend the foot, right. and then reach the foot up. So they're not engaging the quadricep to straighten the leg. If the foot is reaching. Okay. Uh, um, I was doing this with everybody the other day. I just had them to get the feeling of what's happening with the leg was to get the feeling when you're doing this and reaching the foot, but actually as you reach, it brings your body with it. Right. To get the feeling of that compared to engaging the quadricep and where there's no and action. It, it just locks when now the body is, there's no reaching. Because if you get the correct motion, it's going to bring your body with it. And right. that's what we're looking for. Okay. And, and so can, we, can you talk through, Neil, from the standing position with your standing leg and into that, as you would find a nice oh way yeah. of working? Yeah, it we work, so we work from this side. So if you, what I'll have them do is bring the leg up on the knee on the inside of the arm. And do we think about the standing leg first? What's happening with uh, the standing again, leg? Again, if you're just spreading the toes, and it's almost like you're going to jump. Okay. Feeling, okay, get that engagement. And I'll get him to grab the toe, and then pretend he's going to walk upstairs, so yeah. he actually pushes down, and that will actually release his hip, drop the hip down. Yeah, and you like to come around the outside of the leg? The knee on the... Yeah, on yeah, the inside. Because inside. that keeps the hip in alignment. In alignment, If you yeah. take it out to the side, then you've got to twist it, yeah, twist it back like in. Once he's here, come to there, and now, before he does, ah, then just move the foot. Right. So he has to have so the ability to keep the ankle the soft, relax. Just move the foot backwards and forwards. So the foot moves. And then you get to there, now you reach... Once it's there, now reach your foot forward and follow it. And that's going to release in there. It's going to drop the hip. It also means you're not going to dominate with the quadricep muscle. Right. Because the leg's reaching out. Uh-huh. Okay. And then it's much easier to, to go forward. They're putting him through his pace. <laughs> He's starting to sweat and his shirt's going to... His shirt's okay. It's enough. You can lower it down. It's probably time you sat down, Neil. Come and have a sit on the floor. We'll look yeah. at some seated postures. Yeah. We want to be able to use you again at other films. <laughs> <laughs> so with the seated, so we could start with Paschimottanasana, yes, couldn't we? Because yeah, it's yeah. like the classic posture. Yeah, and again, what I've been doing to get this activity in the legs and also to connect here. Right. It's pretty simple. I'll just get you to put your knuckles on the floor and he's done this and you just lift up, you lower down, you lift and automatically lifting the legs know exactly what to do but they're totally engaged in the way they need to there's nothing okay. hard then you lower down take the hands up and try to lift and you see what happens to the body and now you see what's happening in here and yet the legs are engaged yeah. because of the action that happened just trying to lift they know exactly what to do they didn't have to pull the quadriceps didn't have to do anything they just knew exactly the body okay. just knew what to do once he's got this then he just holds here and comes forward. And this holding here, and there's a forward bend. Comes in. And now you can start to see what's happening in the back, much more around it. Whereas um, when he was doing it last week, he came forward and he just reached out and pulled him in. You could see all his spine here. You could see all the trauma going on in his spine starting to tear around this area. Right. Instead of holding it together. And, and you use a very light grip around the feet, don't usually you? Usually I just, uh, first it's the toes, it's, uh, I'd grab and just hold and squeeze the big toe. Yeah. And if I'm doing the side, I actually teach this, where the feet go out this way, and then you stop the movement going out. You just press out, but hold it in, or you push in. Yeah. So I'll do one leg and I'll say, push, push my hand in, push in, just let yeah. it come in, and then I'll make him stop. And then I'll do the same on the outside. Yeah. Push, push, and then do both at once. Right. And that's so you find that neutral place, but neutral place, active, but, but activity. activity on both sides. Mm. And you can do that by just pressing in, but having a feeling of pushing out. So if I'm uh, coming here, I can on the side. I'm actually coming here, breathe in, and I actually push the hands in. Right. And then on the inhalation, that's relaxation. This needs to just release. If I'm doing the elbows out to the side, and we come down, I have this feeling. Um, yeah, there's many variations, but one would be inhale. Exhale, press down. So it would be press the elbow down. Right. Inhale, relax, let it lift. Exhale, press down. So we're just continually making this connection between yin and yang, between the inhalation and exhalation. And if you haven't got somebody to press against, you can still get that same action 
of pressing down, but well, again, do, do, do yeah. yourself. And, and yeah. In fact, one of the in the the last forward bend of the series after back bend, yeah. what I'll get people to do is grab the mat and each side of the mat and breathe in and actually push, try and tear the mat that way. So and push that really away. push okay. away, breathe in, and this is amazing if they push. It really pulls into the lower abdomen and really opens up here right. and the legs press down. So all the good things are happening and usually it just feels so wonderful, especially after a back bend. Yeah. And that's where I'll, if I have somebody who I see is coming in like a pancake yeah. and I'll watch her practice and see how we're going and then I'll come and try that with them at some stage, right. either in Pashimotana Sun or at the end and just see their reaction yeah. and see if they yeah, you know, if they go, wow, that was that's very different. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Then I know I can start adding more and and teach them different concepts again, but teach them in different ways. And how does this differ from somebody Thank that is sitting up, that they're sort of stuck there, but then they round yeah. to bring their head down? Very to different. The, very so. different. It's a different process. Yeah. You know, so how do we stop that from happening? Because that would um, be the fear. That generally, that I would. Just like I wouldn't mind using a belt. Okay. Uh, a belt for the we beginning. We have a belt, Nick. Can you? Last one. Oh yeah, good. They brought some stuff. And it would be pretty simple just to get the belt and just have them want to try and sit up straight. And, and yeah. instead of coming forward like this, yeah. have them try and just bring the elbows back and bring the chest forward until they yeah. get to a, a certain place. Yeah. And then I would allow them to start going down like that. But, okay. But you know, I, and I have students like that. I have, I have one now that's I've been working with him, and I'm just, you know, his back problems. Total yeah. back problem. So it's uh, just getting him to do this, and and now I've got him like this, and just pushing in, trying to come forward. I mean, I'm allowing him now to come a little bit further forward. Yeah. But it was a long time. I just had him connecting and trying to come to get the pelvic tilt. Yeah. So. And if in that Pashimottanasana sequence, there's a, a sometimes a lift up between the each variation. Yes. So, can you do that? So we had that engagement with the knuckles and the heels on the floor. Would that, do you feel a different engagement if you lift all the way up in the normal way? Is it a different type of What do you mean, engagement? jumping back to the So if we went back to that Pashimantanasana, you can sort of put your hands here, can't you, and lift up and then go down and then you go again. Well, would, would that be... No, that's not... Would that be different to doing that? Well, no, this, this, is, a, this is a learning tool. Yeah. You know, this is teaching people to get the feeling before then to get that lift. Once yeah. you've done this a few times, yeah. then you remember it and you just try to lift. So not that you want to do it each time? No, you don't do okay. it all. You know, at the beginning, yes, to, to learn the pattern. To learn the pattern, mm. you do that, but after mm. a while you don't need it. You just learn to, mm. to, to sit. You've mm. better, you know, it's just a, learn, this is a learning tool. Mm. It's a way of feeling it mm. for anybody. Even, even this, just sitting here lifting, like I said, as soon as I lift, yeah. because my heels are down, my legs engage, yeah. and they're engaged in such a beautiful way. They, the whole leg is, knows what to do. It's not mm. dominant anywhere. Mm. And yet I've managed to get this connection when I try to lift again. Then the sitting bones are going down to the floor, the whole back of the leg is going, but my body is lifting. Yeah. And yet I've managed to hold this, this connection here, yeah. this little lower abdomen. And that's what's important. That's the important thing. This is going to stay no matter what it stays. And I come forward. Yeah. And so this motion here, it feels as if I'm going forward. This is actually going backwards, backwards. but it's not. Yeah. It's just a feeling that because of a holding there, the body's going over. And that's what you, you don't get that when you end up coming here and doing this. Because mm. as soon as this motion comes and this goes forward, this is lost. Yeah. You've lost that ability. And then maybe you hold something else. You start squeezing other things to say, I've got to have bandha. And really it's not bandha. You know, bandha is really not that complicated. Mm. It's just that lift, bandha comes holding, not gripping, just holding, and then the forward bend comes. From there. And then the whole body is loose as it goes forward. Yeah. And yet the bandha is a little bit tensed, not yeah. tensed, but connected. And that's the place that allows you to go forward. So it's almost like, you know, I teach you sometimes do harakiri, but don't. Right. You know, you're going to do harakiri in the last moment, you go, oh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and then forward. So. Right. Or even just throwing up. Yeah. And a hiccup. Uh, it's all those uh, things come to the lower abdomen. Drawing. And that's what you keep to come full. Yeah. And then it changes everything. 
and envenomment allows a whole back line of the body to get connected. So the back line is from here yeah. all the way up to here, coming there. So that's what you want. And again, that's the head keeping the back line going. Yeah. Not this. Now it's only. And are there any postures that you would classify as forward folding? We, we, we take them out of the primary, shall we say, for the moment, that it's more difficult to, to re-establish that same pattern. That it's a little bit more tricky because the legs, say, say for instance, Bhavishta Konasana, the legs are wider. Can we see? It's actually, actually easier. So easier because you're coming through the middle. Well, again, you, you're going to have to, um, again, different techniques. One would be, I, I talked about the feet. Yeah. Well, the feet go back this way, mm. push back, push back, and the hands go forward. So I'll come to somebody and say, push back, push back. And then uh, I'll come to the hands and I'll say, push forward. And then I'll say, do the both together. Push your foot back, hand forward. And again, that motion again is pushing in. It's going to connect you to there. Mm. And that's. Again, forward bend. Upa Vista Yeah. Not the, yeah. Not the flopping down. Yeah. So, but that, again, this reaction, just push the foot back, whole leg engages, push the hand forward, as long as you have the shoulders in position. Mm. And this is important, the shoulder girdle in position is going to give us a connection into the whole upper torso. And the feet going back, going to connect through the pelvis, through the psoas, and basically meet at the cyphoid process. Mm. So we're all coming into the diaphragm, and they connect through there, and then we have a, two connections. It looks like it's very e effective at getting the legs activated as well. Oh, very, very position. much, very much, without yeah. tightening anything. Yeah. Just push the foot back, yeah. push the hand forward, the leg knows what to do. Yeah. Then, then if you want to create a little bit more action, you can, but you don't want to start yeah. Locking in the, and then mm. the knees lock in. You know, if you see somebody's heels coming off the ground, yeah. it's a, it's like phew, jump on them. Not don't jump on them, but, but <laughs> in the traditional sense. No. <laughs> hey, hey, careful. Yeah, so, yeah. Don't go too mad. Yeah. So it is very much this motion here, this coming in, and actually going backwards always, mm. and not going back. Just it's just a neutral, but it's stopping you from going into this. Into that. Yeah. So and that rib. As soon as this happens, rib going forward, this goes forward. This, yeah. Much as people say they'll have bunda, they don't have bunda. Bunda right. is this. Mm. And it doesn't have to be that. That definitely doesn't want to be tense. So. And if we, you, we were talking about Janusha Shasana A in the, the prelude at the beginning. Yeah. Can we just see that as another example of, uh, you were talking about where to put the, the foot, because this is quite an yeah. accessible posture for many people, isn't it? Yeah, so this, this is where I would put the foot in January Shishana. Right. And again, I'd go through the same process uh, yeah. to say uh, why, why we want the foot here instead of putting it like that. Yeah. Uh, so what are your we, feelings on We were talking more that? about B, mm. B when it goes like that. And what I would, again, do is get somebody to push down and actually use this foot to lift this knee off the ground and lift up, using this foot and lift as well and then lower down. And again, I get people to do that twice. Lift, right, and to keep and then that lower. activation. And now lift the hands and try and lift again by using your foot. And again, you're going to start to feel as you lift what happens. Body lifts up here when you have the foot like this. Right. Compared to if the foot's there, you don't get the same lift. One is so the Yeah. So that's why I prefer this. It's just more so energetic. So it's really for the energy rather than the positioning of the pelvis and the hip with that? No, well, I like to do, you know, Guruji always says 90 degrees, and I'm always saying, well, maybe he meant 90 degrees on the inside of a leg, not the outside. Right. So, um, yeah. So, but I, I, pre I prefer to have the pelvis square. Yeah. So I'm not doing a twist, I'm coming up much more yeah. straightforward into yeah. the posture. Yeah. And are you coming forward to the inside of this leg or bring the chest? I come to the inside. Come to the I, inside. I, 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 that also kind keeps of feel, it square. I have a feeling, okay, I'm going to come forward in Passion Motana Center. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to do the same thing here. All you're doing coming is moving forward the leg. And moving the legs. Yeah. So I'm looking at more Passion Motana Center. Yeah. It just keeps that alignment yeah. uh, in the body. It yeah. allows the energy to flow. Yeah. And then from that, I mean, I suppose it would be easy to look at Janu Shishas, uh, no, Mary Chesna A. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because now we've got this leg. Yeah, so it's an interesting posture. And again, you have men and women. But um, when we look at the name of it, Marichiasana, 
and, and this is something I only learned a few years ago when I was talking to a Vedic scholar. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, well, Marichi is one of the sons of Brahma, but he wanted to be Brahmacharya. So the positioning of the foot is right into the groin, not out ah. to the side, right into the groin. Okay. So it's more for Brahmacharya to come forward. When I look at Krishnamacharya, that's where his it's foot is. It's right in there. You look at pictures of Atabi Joyce, foot's right in there. Ah. Not out to the side. It's okay. So I used to teach it like this for a long time. Yeah. But now this is the way I do it. I, I'll let people do variations. And, yeah. and women, I kind of go, well, they, you know, you don't have your genitalia down there, so it's, maybe it doesn't work. So yeah. for a man, that's what I do. So it's right in. Okay. And even when you look at Krishnamacharya, if he wraps around and he holds here yeah. and comes forward, it's a very different forward bend. Okay. It's much more up here to come over, yeah. rather than going forward like that. And Neil's got his foot pointing out. It looks like to try and keep it in line with where his knee is going. Yeah, maybe we... Oh, sorry. So in here, doesn't matter. What's going to happen to his knee, it's going to go on an angle. Yeah. And people say, should we get this sitting bone on the floor? Yeah. Well, it's not possible. Mm. because of the, uh, the femur and the, the length. length of the femur but, relative to the tibia. And but everything. you're trying to get the sitting bone as close as you can to so the So energetically the pelvis is yeah, going and down. And as you get the sitting bone down, it's really going to, again, the work is to working from here to push it down. So yeah. you're going to get back to Bunder again. Yeah. So, and again, look at his toes beautifully. He's yeah. in one, one and a half weeks. He's a good student. <laughs> yeah. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> been listening. Even though he hasn't been coming to all the classes. <laughs> Did you have to hit him with a stick at all to try and get him to correspond? <laughs> No, he's just been, just been listening and a few adjustments and he's, he's receptive to the adjustments and, yeah. and seeing how good it feels. So, yeah. so that's what happens when you get a student like that, you just keep feeding them more yeah. and more, teach them yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank cool. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Darby. I think Thank this you. is really, you know, so play with these things and, and see whether that's, that's for you. And, um, you know, maybe you'll want to catch up with Darby to get more details than we've got on, uh, on this little short film. But it gives you some different ways of thinking, maybe a different way of approaching things you might like to play with. And um, yeah, brilliant. Thanks Good. very much. Thank, thank you, Neil, as well, for your help. Yeah, Good. Thanks, cool. Neil. Thank you, Darby. <laughs> Good. Good.